Resident Evil 4 is an absolute masterclass in replayability. The countless hours spent on this game's campaign alone is staggering. Not only that, but it has two additional game modes that no one has ever even played. How come you don't want me, man? And a high score mode called Mercenaries, where you can play as five completely different characters with unique abilities and weapons. But even so, there is only so much a game like Resident Evil 4 has to offer. And eventually, you move on. Or you build an unhealthy obsession with it and spend more hours on it than any human being should spend on anything other than sleeping and being on the toilet. If you're like me and have built this unhealthy obsession, there is no better way to spend your time in a game than by spending an inordinate amount of time trying to beat it quickly. Or how we call it, speedrunning. But even so, after 2,000 hours, even that can lose its luster. And we need to seek out even more ways to play our favorite games. And that's when we turn to mods. I found an amazing mod by Razer called the Resident Evil 4 Trainer, and it has a few settings hidden away inside of it that let you play as the mercenary characters during the main game. Krauser, Wesker, Hunk, Ada, and even Ashley as the main character. This instantly attracted me to one idea. What if I was in an alternate universe? One where we would speedrun these games as the mercenaries characters. What would that speedrun look like? How long would it be? And would it even be fun? Today I decided to find out, and I was going to do so with Krauser. Krauser is a mercenary by trade and ex-US military member, as well as a former comrade of Leon S. Kennedy. His job in the normal game was to kidnap Ashley and take her back to Sadler for infection, then send her back to the United States. Today is an alternate reality though, one where he'll use his insane mercenary skills to save the president's daughter from... himself. Prepare for your death, Krauser. An epic battle of internal conflict. Thankfully for this battle, Krauser is well prepared. He is equipped with an insanely strong physique, a faster running speed, a bow that instantly kills most normal enemies with a single headshot, and most importantly, his trusty Plagas infected arm. This can be used at any time to instantly blow anything in his way to smithereens. The rules for the run are simple. Beat the game on the professional difficulty as fast as possible. I can use any glitches or tricks I can find, but I have to play as Krauser the whole time. I can use the merchant, but for this run, it won't be necessary. Krauser has some limitations. He can equip most weapons and use them just fine, but for this run, I'm only going to be using the bow. He cannot equip rocket launchers as they simply won't let him fire them, so it's going to be a Hanzo speedrun, I guess. When my first run starts, I am zooming. Krauser's increased run speed applies to him holding the bow and grenades. It's even faster than Leon's grenade run speed. That alone would make for a huge time save in the first half of the game. It also makes a lot of the early rooms very easy, because you can just outrun a lot of enemy attacks that you wouldn't normally be able to in a normal Leon run. I pick up the grenade from the crow like normal and head into the village ready to fuck shit up. My plan was to do the normal village strat, but surely it would be faster to abuse Krauser's sword arm to instantly kill tons of enemies instead of having to use grenades for it. Then I could use that grenade for later. Surely. Well, it would be if they weren't hiding. They must be scared because Krauser's biceps are thicker than their skull. This did allow me to save an extra grenade though that would come in handy later. Krauser also had some pretty funky animations. His jumping down animation is a lot slower than Leon's, but it does a sick flip so I guess that breaks even. How is that not enough enemies? Ouch. The first three chapters fly by and all of a sudden I'm at the fish, and it's completely normal until I realize that the boat is haunted. Oh no, Leon! <laughs> From there I head to Gigante and test out the sword art online. Normally when enemies are hit by it, they kaboom like a grenade killed them and then they disintegrate instantly. But Gigante's toes are stronger than any substance known to man, so he doesn't go down in just one hit. Instead I have to jump back onto his back into the QT and stab him in the toes again to reveal the Plaga once more. Yeah, I thought he would insta-die too. This is actually cooler. I like this. This is where I collect Ashley as Krauser, and things get a little weird. So the default key for using Ashley's commands as the mercenaries characters is C, and that just so happens to be the same key you use to pull out Krauser's arm. This conflict actually makes for a much more interesting run because it heavily nerfs Krauser in the presence of Ashley. You see, Ashley can actually get friendly fired by Krauser's giant knife arm. And because it's so hard to use it while she's in the room, this makes it essentially a tool that you can only use if you create enough space between Krauser and Ashley. Speedruns are more fun if you have multiple different tools to solve many different situations. And without this conflict, Krauser's sword arm would actually be the single tool you would need to solve every conflict, thus making the run not that enjoyable. 
And by enjoyable, I mean painful, because these rooms with Ashley are a complete nightmare. Especially because of the increased running speed, that actually makes Krauser outrun Ashley over time, making her eventually get stuck on enemies and objects much easier, as Krauser runs off into the sunset without her, like we all wish we could in our own playthroughs. Once we finally make it out of that godforsaken room, we arrive at the infamous cabin to get to hear Lewis say that famous line. Are you trying to kill me? Use this. This section ends when 40 enemies are killed, and normally this takes about two and a half minutes. But with how insanely strong Krauser's bow and arm are, we don't even get forced upstairs. We hit 40 kills in about a minute. Oh yeah, we didn't even go upstairs. Easy clap. No matter how strong Krauser is though, his strength would never overcome the inaccuracy of the bow's laser sight. Ow. In normal mercenaries, almost all of your shots are taken at relatively close range, so it doesn't matter. But on the gondola section, not only do you have to shoot many enemies from a long range, but also while you and them are moving, and the bow is not hit scan. The bow itself actually fires much further to the left than the later sight implies, and since it's not hit scan, you have to lead your shots. This makes the gondola actually one of the more difficult parts of the run, when normally it's a total breeze. I actually fall asleep during this part in normal speedruns. Mendez gets big cheese as I blow out his back harder than a femboy on a Friday. Yeah, but I probably won't use Wesker's melee that much, because it's not that strong. At least compared to like, Browser. Hey, Frostwolf. You see what I mean? Then I get my back blown out trying to soar to this arm truck. Can I do this? I sure can, but sometimes you need to ask whether or not you should, not whether or not you can. The castle is interesting because a lot of rooms are much simpler than when playing as Leon, but the presence of Ashley makes things get a little bit more complicated than others. I tested each room out a bit to figure out some optimal strategies. It seemed like telling Ashley to wait really far away and then using the arm as much as I wanted was a good strategy for now. But setting it up was slow, so eventually, if I wanted a good time, I would have to do it another way that didn't require setting it up. Will this kill Ashley? Yes. Water Hall was the epitome of this. Krauser was so strong I couldn't avoid spawning in extra enemies. I would use the age-old tactic of killing the archers, then reloading the room, thus saving them being dead, making the next attempts easier. I eventually came up with a strategy to start on the right side of Waterhall and kill as many as possible with the arm. Then I would take Ashley to the basement and open up the crank. I would then leave her down there and kill everything I could with the arm before cranking the staircase. Oh, she was ducked! Once in the second phase, I could try my best to shoot the guys chasing Ashley, but the bow is really not built for this. The Visadors are usually insanely scary as they kill most normal speedruns, but surely with Krauser. Wait a second, he lived? Okay, never mind. It's just a dying animation. Thank God! I almost had a heart attack. Bitch. Bro, he lived! The boy who lived! No! You're kidding, right? That Novi did not just survive a Krauser arm. Okay, never mind. He just had a dying animation. For Sean. With Novi's no longer being an annoyance, that cleared up one of my biggest fears. The gallery room was a bit different, because I couldn't do the normal fire grenade strategy since Krauser's view model is wildly different, making me miss the fire grenade. Oh, I have no idea how to throw it. Yeah, he does like a crazy different angle. Then I plowed through the rest of castle until I arrived at 3-4, where I saved Ashley from a group of terrifying cultist Ganados. Or at least I would if I could fucking hit them. Oh god. What's on fire? Bro, that sounded like a goddamn... Like, where's the air horn, dude? Then, once Ashley is finally saved, I switch to playing as her. But the mod overwrites this state and makes us play this section as Krauser. When I switch to Ashley from Krauser and then back to Krauser, it overrides the health value and sets it to Ashley's health, which is hard-coded to be lower than normal. This, at the time, could not be avoided, but I thought it would go back to normal after I switched back to Krauser. It did not. Bro, I got scammed! My health is like permanently small now. Since then, this bug has been fixed, but at the time I had to get some yellow herbs to restore my HP back to running speed. Unfortunately, I didn't know about this ahead of time, so I didn't have yellow herbs available. So I had to limp a really long way before I could get back to running HP. Thankfully, I didn't need to be in running speed to annihilate everything with the sword arm. 
I couldn't equip the rocket launcher, but this also applied to the striker. Unfortunately, this meant no dipman glitch, so no double gigante skip and no fast running speed. The other characters that aren't Leon also can equip the striker, but also can't dipman glitch, unfortunately. It seems to be just a Leon animation specific trick. That doesn't mean we can't do anything fast, though. Who needs a rocket to kill Verdugo when you can just punch him into oblivion? There we go. Stay cool! The run was going decently smooth, at least for a run with new mechanics that I've never used before. This was until I got to the boulder room. Normally you have to activate a few levers to use the dynamite to explode a boulder in the way. But then when you activate the lever with Krauser, something weird happens. It shows the tutorial text for activating the sword arm instead of the text saying something happened with the dynamite. This soft locks you staring at the lever forever. Daughters, gotcha. This is a bit unfortunate, but there is an alternative. An old skip used mostly in no merchant speedruns called Boulder Skip. By jumping down on the edge of the platform underneath the lever, you can land out of bounds and then walk across the rim past the boulder. Problem solved. At least it would be if Krauser could do the trick. For some reason, the drop down front flip animation of Krauser makes it much, much harder to hit the right spot and land out of bounds. Normally as Leon, this trick is difficult, but really consistent. As Krauser though, it took me over 20 minutes to hit it one time. I wasn't even sure if it was possible at first. Even like, I'm afraid it's not gonna work because you see all that? Like, I landed like on the edge kinda. But I just got kinda pushed through it. After stopping the timer and hitting it once in practice just to prove it was possible, I booted up the timer again and it took me another 20 minutes to do it while the timer was running. This was so brutal. I definitely needed a different strategy or at least a better setup. The next room was double gigante and I couldn't skip it. So I blasted their little toesies off. Then I sword armed my way through the Novisa doors and head into the mine section where I would normally do minecart skip, but because Krauser can't jump over a railing like a normal person, I actually can't do this skip either. Oh, he has a different animation jumping over. I don't think it'll work. This is the first time I would do the minecart normally in probably about five years. Next up was the Salazar boss fight where I got stuck behind the bars. Apparently because I didn't have the cutscene fix option selected, I didn't move during the cutscenes, and because of this, I was stuck behind these bars while fighting Salazar. That would be fine, I could just kill him from here. But the bars don't go up after he dies, making me just be completely stuck in this room forever. I do what speedrunners do best and do a little bit of cheating to get back in bounds, but I found out later that this was just an unchecked setting that I needed to check. I could still do island skip, thank god, and I sword fisted my way through glory throughout the godforsaken rock in the middle of the ocean. This run really was cursed. It felt like Krauser was not only fighting the Ganados, but his own inner demons. This was revealed to actually be the canon interpretation of this playthrough during the Krauser QTE fight where Leon never showed up and Krauser just fought himself. Been a long time, comrade. <laughs> he 3 goes down with a few punches and then Krauser wants a rematch. His and my mental health are now on an all time low. Thankfully I take the Krauser pill and blow him away with a few sword arm punches. 5-4 <laughs> was just as cancer as ever. But you made it through eventually. So like they're removing JJ from the remake, right? Once I arrive at the final boss, I spam him for about a minute straight with the sword arm until he begs for mercy, allowing me to save Ashley once and for all. Or at least until Krauser changes his mind and decides to take her back into his custody. The first run took nearly three hours. The run was mostly an experiment, just playing with the mechanics and making sure I could even beat the game with the things set up the way they were. But no speedrun is solved in one attempt. It would take many runs before a meta would truly start to develop. That being said, I did another run right after and it was shaping up to go a lot better. The village was still scuffed, but I had a plan this time. And that plan involved not accidentally killing Ashley with the sword arm. I don't die on the gondola and I make it to castle in about 22 minutes. About on pace with a normal Leon speed run. Then I make a monumental mistake. There are compatibility mods in place that allow you to do Ashley's section as other characters. And these mods allow you to leave the section early without collecting anything. In my immortal ignorance, I left without grabbing the goat head for the Camaro wall. I then had to teleport back into the room and do it again to grab the piece, fixing the soft lock. Oh, you're right. I need that piece. Shit. Love that animation from Krauser. That's a good man. 
From there, I ran to the second half of the game, much easier this time, and even hit boulder skip after only about two minutes of trying. The elevator got blown out before the guys could even jump down, and Salivar did not lock me in the cage this time. I finished my second run in about one hour and 54 minutes. A lot better than last time, but still pretty slow. Not much went wrong, really. It was just that Krauser didn't have the ability to do any skips. His boss fights were fast, but his room clears were kind of slow. Using his arm kills everything instantly, but that isn't everything in a speedrun. Not all enemies need to be killed, and just running past with a good strategy is often faster than killing everything, even with this insanely overpowered arm. My one major time save was the boulder skip. I could save a bunch of time if I did this first try. I even lost a few PB attempts to not being able to do the trick quick enough. So before I started any more runs, I tried to find a consistent setup. And nothing. I just couldn't. After about an hour of trying, I was getting frustrated. And so I started sword punching the wall trying to clip out by using that. But one thing I hadn't tried was pressing the sword on command button while in the middle of an animation. So when jumping down to land on the platform, I pressed the button to on command arm thrust, and this happened. Well, I could cheat like that. Oh boy, I hadn't tried that yet. I immediately knew that this had some insane implications for the speedrun. Basically how it works is, the mod when triggering the arm to attack overwrites any existing animation. So if Krauser is mid-climb, jump, door open, really any animation, then that animation will be interrupted and the arm thrust will come out frame one. It has the ultimate priority. This is even the case if you're in the middle of the air. This puts you through walls, out of bounds, and can even make you fly. The way out of bounds work in Resident Evil 4 is quite particular. Unlike any other game that I've seen when you go out of bounds, in Resident Evil 4, the game actually creates an artificial floor underneath you wherever you got out of bounds. This allows you to walk anywhere in the game, even through walls at this height. That is, until you come into contact with a real floor. Then you snap back to the ground and the walls regain their collision. This means though that you can in any room with Krauser that has a ladder, a jump down, or anything like that, clip out of bounds and run to the end of the room. This has so many implications, it's insane. The character with the least amount of skips was soon to become the character with the most by far. I immediately got to searching for potential skips and I found a lot. The very first thing I discovered was a skip for most of 5-4. By going out of bounds on the first ladder, I could get back in bounds in the triple Gatling gun room, skipping the first half of 5-4. Then I could use the next ladder to get past the locked part of the door and exit the room without having to fight any enemies in the triple Gatling gun room. This was a huge game changer. Not having to deal with the insanely random and dangerous 5-4 would already by itself make this run better than the normal Leon speedrun. I then found a similar skip for War Room just a few rooms later. I did discover something unique about Krauser though. While Wesker and Krauser both can get out of bounds the same way by using the tech, they interact with the environment in different ways. The snapping mechanic I talked about earlier for some reason doesn't entirely apply to Krauser. I have no idea why, but unless I pick up an item, take damage, or interact with an object, I can't snap back onto the floor. This opens up a new possibility for even more tricks that you couldn't do with Wesker, but I needed to take damage to be able to clip back and bounce. Like in the War Room example I just showed, I throw a fire grenade at myself to knock myself back and bounce behind the locked door. This adds a cool routing grenades to hurt yourself mechanic to the speedrun that no other category has. I tried to skip the truck, but unfortunately the game snaps you back to the correct location after the cutscene ends. So that one was a no-go. I don't think I'll be able to hit the level trigger because I can't raise my height. It's so sad, no truck skip. Then I found that you could skip the Salazar robot hands room by using the sword arm right before you touch the ground, making you low enough in the air to be able to activate the door without being so low that you touch the ground. This would be by far the hardest of the new skips though. If you didn't time it early enough, then you would just land on the ground, and if you did it too early, then you would reach the door and have to nade yourself back in bounds. But even then, sometimes you would be too high and not be able to touch the ground or the door. If that happened, you just had to restart the room, and that was huge time loss. Next, in the gallery room, I could skip the Red Zealot entirely by using the sword arm mid-fall to land at the exact right height to interact with the door that triggers the cutscene for the next room. If you don't trigger the cutscene, you can still beat the room, but you leave without the Camaro wall item and then you soft lock later. With all these new skips, I was really excited to get runs going, so I started one knowing I would spend half the run looking for new skips. There are so many jump overs, doors, ladders, and elevators in this game that there was no way I'd be able to remember all of them from memory. So just doing a run and testing it that way was the best method of finding new skips. 
In this run, I found a skip on 1-2 that skips the factory room, getting back in bounds by kicking a door. After Del Lago, I could use the jump across to skip the waterfall, right through the mountain, and grabbing a key item to go back in bounds. Then I found a skip for the entirety of the first and second Novisador rooms, some small stuff in the clock tower. I skipped Verdugo by going out of bounds during the knockdown animation of the liquid nitrogen, and a much easier boulder skip, double gigante skip, and a scuff minecart skip. I even started to notice that if I spam the melee button, it was faster than walking, but it had this crazy jerking animation that was just so nauseating. This needed a solution, because doing this in the run for movement would make the run near unwatchable and unplayable. Thankfully, there was an option in the trainer to disable the camera movement when you do this on command attack, and enabling it also gave it a cooldown so it didn't hurt your eyes and it was no longer faster than running. This simple rule change solved the annoying movement and obnoxious camera issues at the same time. I could then also completely skip Salazar's boss fight. Instead of me being stuck here forever, he was now stuck forever. I could still hear him calling for Step Bro to help him to this day. Did I? Oh my god, Step Bro, I'm stuck! Can you help me? I found one more skip in 5-1 where I skipped through some walls and grabbed a yellow herb to get back in bounds, and then I tried to skip the Krauser cutscene, but similar to the truck, it sucks you back in. I did fix the texture issue though, and so Leon showed up for the fight this time. I got back to the Krauser fight proper at about an hour and 20 minutes. But then I spent a bunch of time testing to see if I could skip the Krauser fight. I could skip a few things, but not much. This was because I needed to collect all three of the pieces to unlock the door at the end of the room. I could skip from the first to the second by using this ladder and a fire grenade. Then from there, I could skip the final section and the robots entirely. After killing Krauser, I accidentally found the next skip by doing the punch during a radio call. Right at the start of 5-4, there's a radio call on a slope, and by punching during the radio call, I was able to move during the cutscene and go right out of bounds at the start of the level. Doing it for skips and stuff? Okay, that was sick. That's like huge, actually. I like did it during the cutscene. This let me skip the entirety of 5-4 all the way to the end door without having to go back in bounds later. This is just a faster and safer way of doing the trick that we already found earlier. More importantly though, it gave me a ton more ideas for skips that I would have to try out on my next run. I finished with a 1-31-36, another half an hour improvement, but I literally just looked for skips this entire playthrough. It wasn't even close to optimized, but with the new radio call tech, there was much more skips to be discovered. After a bit more testing, I figured out that Krauser is actually so strong that he fishes like a true American with his bare hands. He can jump in the water during the Delago fight and punch it in the face, instantly killing it. Jump in the water and kill the fish with your bare hands. This made the fight consistent and a lot faster. Then right after Novi's 2 skip, we approach the clock tower and just like an RE3 remake, we're gonna skip this. When a radio call happens, you can melee to go through the wall and walk outside the double Garador room. This is where the last skip that we would find would happen. When leaving Novi's 3, there's an elevator locked behind the key item. Every elevator in this game is actually active all the time. That's how we could skip the Verdugo fight just a few rooms prior. By getting into the elevator room early, we can skip the entire minecart section and head right into the Salazar statue. We call it minecart skip skip. With these extra skips along with a bit of practice, I was able to get a 11632. This is with minimal practice, but getting every skip first or second try. The world record for Leon is a 119, so this is already 3 minutes faster without proper optimization. I was curious if any other characters would be faster than Leon, and I'm not sure yet. If anyone besides Krauser could be, but goddamn Krauser's a lot faster. The run is way faster because it has a lot more skips. The increased running speed also helps to close the gap. Never having to go to the merchant because the bow is so good also saves a ton of time. The pacing on this speedrun is breakneck. It is really, really fun. It feels like almost every other room has a skip, and with the way RE4 works, being only allowed to skip one room at a time makes it so it's not completely trivializing the game. I mean, it is a lot easier than Leon, and way more consistent too. The arm completely changes the way you approach the game, but boy is it fast and a ton of fun. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. If you want to try the mod out for yourself, it's Resident Evil 4 Trainer by Razor. It's available for free on Nexus Mods and available on his Patreon as well. If you would like unlimited access to full text tutorials for how to install and set up this mod, as well as all mods that I make videos of, 
you can access them for just $3 a month on my Patreon, like these fine folks have on screen here. I redid my whole Patreon lately and will be giving access to tutorials for mods like these and guides for more popular runs like all achievement runs or no hit runs. If that sounds interesting to you, the link is on screen. Thanks so much for watching and stay stylish.